at the farmhouse and the daughter used to go into the cellar to fetch the beer for supper. So one evening she had gone down to fetch the beer and she happened to look up at the ceiling while she was fetching and she saw an axe stuck in one of the beams. It must have been there a long, long time but somehow or other she had never noticed it before and she began a thinking and she thought it was very dangerous to have that axe there for she said to herself suppose him and me was to be married and we was to have a son and he was to grow up to be a man and come down into the cellar to fetch the beer like as I'm doing now and the axe was to fall on his head and kill him what a dreadful thing that would be and she put down the candle and the jug and sat herself down and began crying well they began to wonder upstairs how it was that she was so long fetching the beer and her mother went down to see after her and she found her sitting on the settee crying and the beer running all over the floor why whatever is the matter said her mother oh mother says she look at that horrible axe suppose we was to be married and was to have a son and he was to grow up and was to come down to the cellar to fetch the beer and the axe was to fall on his head and kill him what a dreadful thing that would be dear dear what a dreadful thing that would be said the mother and she sat herself down a side of the daughter and started crying too then after a bit the father began to wonder why they didn't come back and he went down into the cellar to look after them himself and there they were two of them sat crying and the beer running all over the floor whatever is the matter says he why says the mother look at that horrid axe just suppose if our daughter and her sweetheart was to be married and was to have a son and he was to grow up and was to come down into the cellar to fetch the beer and the axe was to fall on his head and would kill him what a dreadful thing that would be dear 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 so it would said the father and he sat himself down aside the other two and started a crying <laughs> Now the gentleman got tired of stopping in the kitchen by himself and at last he went down into the cellar too to see what they were after and there they were sat crying side by side and the beer running all over the floor and he ran straight and turned the tap then he said whatever are you three doing sitting there crying and letting the beer run all over the floor oh says the father look at that horrible axe suppose you and our daughter was to be married and was to have a son and he was to grow up and was to come down into the cellar to fetch the beer and the axe was to fall on his head and kill him and then they all started a crying worse than before. <laughs> but the gentleman burst out laughing and he reached up, pulled out the axe and then he said, I've travelled many miles and I've never met three such big sillies as you three before. And now I shall start out on my travels again when I can find three bigger sillies than you three then I'll come back and marry your daughter so he wished them goodbye and started off on his travels and left them all crying because the girl had lost her sweetheart well he set out and he traveled a long way and at last he came to a woman's cottage that had some grass growing on the roof and the woman was trying to get her cow to go up the ladder to the grass and the poor thing durst not go. So the gentleman asked the woman what she was doing. Why, lucky, she said, look at all that beautiful grass. I'm going to get my cow onto the top of the roof to eat it. 
She'll be quite safe, for I shall tie a string around her neck and pass it down the chimney and tie it to my wrist as I go around the house so she can't fall off without my knowing it. Oh, you poor silly, said the gentleman. You should cut the grass and throw it down to the cow. But the woman thought it was easier to get the cow up the ladder than to get the grass down. So she pushed the cow and coaxed her up and got her up and tied a string around her neck and passed it down the chimney and fastened it to her own wrist. And the gentleman went on his way. But he hadn't gone far when the cow tumbled off the roof, pulling the string behind her. And the weight of the cow tied to her wrist pulled the woman up the chimney and she stuck fast halfway up and was smothered in the soot. Well, that was one big silly. And the gentleman went on and on and he went to an inn to stop the night. And they were so full at the inn that they had to put him in a double bedded room and another traveller was to sleep in the other bed. The man was a very pleasant fellow and they got very friendly together. But in the morning, when they were both getting up, the gentleman was surprised to see the other hang his trousers between the two beds and run across the room and try to jump into them. And he tried over and over again and couldn't manage it and the gentleman wondered whatever he was doing it for. At last he stopped and wiped his face with his handkerchief. Oh dear, he says, I do think trousers are the most awkwardest kind of clothes that ever were. I can't think who could have invented such things. It takes me the best part of an hour to get into mine every morning and I get so hot. How do you manage yours? So the gentleman burst out a laughing and showed him how to put them on and he was very much obliged to him and said he should never have thought of doing it that way. So that was another big silly. Then the gentleman went on his travels again and he came to a village. And outside the village, there was a pond. And around the pond was a crowd of people. And they had all got rakes and brooms and pitchforks reaching into the pond. And the gentleman asked, what was the matter? Why, they say, matter enough. The moon's tumbled into the pond and we can't rake her out any which way. So the gentleman burst out a laughing and told them to look up into the sky and that it was only the reflection of the moon in the water. But they wouldn't listen to him and abused him shamefully and he got away as quick as he could. So there was a whole lot of sillies bigger than the three sillies at home. So the gentleman turned back home again and married the farmer's daughter. And if they didn't live happily ever after, that's nothing to do with you or me. And that was the story of the three sillies.